All right, ladies and gentlemen, this video will focus on both surface area and volume for both prisms and cylinders. Remember, prisms and cylinders have the same formulas for lateral area, surface area, and volume because they have two bases. We will do a second video that's going to deal with pyramids and cones. Those only have one base. Let's quick review of what all of our variables stand for. LA is our lateral area. That's the area of all of our lateral faces. Capital P is case sensitive. That stands for the perimeter of a base. So the perimeter of one base. H is the height, which is always the distance between your two bases. SA is your surface area. Sometimes we'll see that as TA for total area. And that's going to be your lateral area, which we calculate with this, plus two times capital B, which is the area of your base. V is your volume, area of your base, and the same height as with the lateral area. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this first one. This is a prism, and the key to this type of a problem is understanding what shape the base is. Do not forget this. Bases in prisms and cylinders are always opposite and parallel, not necessarily the bottom. In this case, a lot of people think that this base is a rectangle because it's on the bottom. It's not. Your bases here are these triangles that are opposite and parallel to each other. Those are the bases for this prism. So the base here is a triangle, which means I have to calculate the perimeter of a triangle and the lateral area is going to be the height, which is the distance between my bases. That's this length here. That's how far apart my bases are. That's the height for both lateral area and volume. Now, I need the perimeter of the base. I also need the area of the base. Since this is a triangle, the area of my base is going to be 1 half lowercase b times h, and I'll put with this triangle, the height of the triangle. The lowercase b is 21 inches, whereas the height of the triangle is 20. Difference between this height and this height. So without going through all of the calculations, so 1 half of 21 times the 20, we get a 210 square inch base. That's the area of one base. But a little trickier might be finding the perimeter of my base. I'm going to have to take 20 plus 21 plus this side, which happens to be the hypotenuse of a right triangle. I'll call that x. So the perimeter of my base is going to be 20 plus 21 plus x. We have to use the Pythagorean theorem here to find x. 20 squared plus 21 squared, leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. And again, to save time, I won't go through all of the calculations, but we wind up getting x to be 29. This is a length of 29 inches, so instead of 21 plus 20 plus x, it's 21 plus 20 plus 29 for a perimeter of my base of 70 inches. Now we're ready to go. We have all of our key pieces of information for my lateral area. I have the perimeter of my base. I know the height of my prism. So that's going to be 70 times 15. I have to add to that not one area of the base, but two areas of my base. And I have my area of my base to be 210, so it's 2 times 210. Again, I am going to save us time. This is something we would calculate. I trust that you know how to use your calculator and follow the order of operations. When doing so, we should get 1,470, this is an area problem, inches squared. For the volume, I have everything I need as well. Capital B is 210, lowercase h. Anytime I'm using a surface area volume, my three-dimensional formulas, that lowercase h is this, the distance between my two bases. So 210 times 15, that's 3,150. Since I am dealing with volume, this is inches squared, this is inches, that gets me inches cubed. 
In a second type of a problem, I am looking at a cylinder. I know it is a cylinder because the base shape now is a circle. That means the area is pi r squared. The perimeter is 2 pi r. 8 is my diameter, so my radius is 4 centimeters. Go ahead and press pause. Use that to calculate the length of the perimeter for one base and the area for one base. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a perimeter of 8 pi centimeters. That's the perimeter of one of our circular bases here. And we have the area of the base is 16 pi centimeters squared. Now, height distance between bases. Height is not always vertical. Height is the distance between bases. So that's what I'm going to use when I'm calculating surface area and volume. Lateral area, again, same equation, perimeter, which is 8 pi, times the height, which we already said was 12, plus 2 times the area of the base, which we calculated to be 16 pi. Now if I do this separately, I get 96 pi plus 32 pi. These both have pi. I want my answer as an exact answer. So I'm going to just add these since they have pi in them in both terms. I can combine them. They are like terms to get 128 pi. We are talking about, ooh, that's meters and that's centimeters. Let's assume it was both centimeters and call it centimeters squared. And then for volume area is 16 pi, height is 12 centimeters. That's just a straight up multiplication problem to get 192 pi centimeters cubed. Again, these are exact answers. If I wanted to estimate, I would multiply by pi and I would get a decimal. It would be more than three times 128. It would in fact be 3.14159 and so on times 128. But for our purposes, we want them to be exact unless we are comparing two different objects.